Hello, this is Mr. Allen, and today I want to do a quick little mini lesson on differential equations. So this was chapter five in our book. So let's go ahead and get started. The first slide that we have here is um, the warm up, and I'm not going to go through this, but basically these are some questions you might want to pause and answer. Um, so similar to what we've been doing in class. I'm not going to take time to do that. Let's look at our first example here. Our first example here is to how do we check the solution of a differential equation? So here we can see that we, oops, we have a differential equation and the differential equation is a differential equation because it has an equal sign and it has a derivative. And the first question here asks us is, is y equals seven x squared a solution? So let's check and see if that is indeed the case. And the way that we do that is, well, first of all, we know what y is. Y is this, uh, x squared, um, 7x squared. We also need to know what y prime is. So by the power rule, we know that y prime would be 14x. And so now we can take this information and we can just, like, you know, if we were solving a regular equation, plug it in and see if it works. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get x minus 2 equals 0. And then we'll plug in the things that we've just figured out here. So we know that y prime is 14x, so I'll put 14x in here for y prime. We know that y is 7x squared. And so then we can go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So we're going to get 14x squared minus 14x squared equals 0. And 0, of course, is equal to 0. So check. So the answer is yes. This is a solution for that particular differential equation. And then I've got a couple more examples here that you can can um, check. And then I got a final question here for you to think about as well. My second example is on something called a slope field. So um, <clears throat> this is a particular differential equation that we would not be able to solve using our techniques. So um, the good news is, is uh, all hope is not lost. We can actually use something called a slope field to get some idea of what the solutions of this differential equation look like. And they actually ask us in this problem to sketch the particular solution that goes through the point one, one. So just as a reminder on how to do that, I've got a table and I've got some selected values of X and Y. We could have done many more. Um, so for example, let's, let's start easy. Let's say, uh, let's say we wanted to check, you know, at two, one, that would be when X is two and Y is one. So we use our information here. So in that case, that would be y prime would be equal to 2 times 2 um, plus 1. So I'm taking the x's and the y's, and I'm plugging them into this. And of course, that's going to give me 5. So this is 5. So that tells me that down here on my uh, coordinate plane at 2, 1, that the slope here has to be very steep, a slope of 5. And we'll just do, let's do one more here. Let's do a negative and a 0 in there. So I put, if I put zero in for the X, and if I put negative one in for the Y, you get negative one. So that tells me that the slope at zero, negative one is indeed negative one. So it's gonna have a slope like this. And then we can continue this process and this will generate something called a slope field. And this slope field gives us some idea of what the actual solutions look like. And remember there's infinitely many solutions that hold plus C thing. And finally, they asked us to graph the point, that, or I'm sorry, the particular solution at 1, 1, which would be this point right here. That would be 1, 1. And so let's do that maybe in purple. So I'm going to try to use these slopes to kind of give me some idea. Here's the point I'm trying to hit. Oops. To give me some idea of what this curve is doing. So it's kind of coming down, and then it's going to kind of come up, and it's going to follow those slopes. So this might be the particular solution at one, one. So that's a slope field. Uh, probably the most important and most challenging section of chapter five was section 5.3. So that's what this is an example of and the idea of this whole separation of variables. So this is a differential equation that we can solve. We can solve it using integration. But the problem is, is that we've got X variables and y variables on both sides of the equation. So the first thing we need to do is get all of our y variables on one side and our x variables on the other. 
So I think the you know probably the easiest way to do this would be just kind of cross multiply, right? So if, you know, I'm going to leave the dy on the left, and so I'm going to multiply the dx to the right. So that kind of went over here by multiplication. This x term is fine where it's at, so maybe I'll leave it there. But I want my y term to come over here. So if the y goes over here, I've got to use a division to do that. So I'll put y here. And then last but not least, I got this x squared plus 4 on the left. So I want to divide that over to the right. And that gives me this, this equation here. This differential equation has now had its variables separated. Um, I guess another way that we could have written this is, uh, let me maybe write it this way, I think it will be easier to see how to integrate this. Now we've got a separable, separated differential equation. So we can go ahead and integrate the left-hand side. We're going to get the natural log absolute value of y. And on the right-hand side, uh, let's see, how are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to need a little u sub. So u would be x squared plus 4. du would be 2x dx. But I'm going to go ahead and divide that 2 over to the left. And so what I'm going to do is this x dx, I'm going to replace with 1 half du. And then, of course, this thing is just u. So that's going to be 1 over u. And now I'm going to integrate. <coughs> so this gives me uh, 1 half natural log absolute value of u plus c which is the same thing as one half natural log absolute value of x squared plus four plus c. And technically this is the solution, but I'm gonna go ahead um, and clean it up just a little bit. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. And so that's gonna give me uh, the two natural log of y equals natural log absolute value of x squared plus four. Uh, plus c, two times c is still c. And then of course I could do the natural log of y squared equals the natural log absolute value of x squared plus four plus c. And then last but not least, uh, we want to get rid of natural log, so I'm going to eat both sides. And so it looks like our final answer here, I'm going to stand over here out of the way, is going to be y squared equals c parenthesis x squared plus 4. You do not need the absolute value here um, because this every, this is all squared and positive, so everything's good to go. So that would be the particular solution uh, for this differential equation. Uh, I'm sorry, the general solution. General solution. Let me write that down. This is the general solution. <clears throat> and the reason it's a general solution is because we have that C. Example four, I'm going to just start. I'm not going to finish this. This is multiple choice. One of the problems I did earlier, um, I mentioned why would being able to check solution be helpful? So there, this, I'll maybe start that process here and then move on. So they give you the differential equation and they give you the um, particular solution. And what I claim is, is you might be able to do this problem without actually knowing, having to know how to solve this differential equation. So one strategy you could do is, well, we know that x equals 1 and y equals 6 is part of the solution. So you could just plug that into this equation to see if that works. So is 6, question, let me put a question mark above here, is 6 uh, equal to, and then this would be e, sorry, is 6 equal to e to the, 1 plus 17 over 3, which is the same thing as e to the 6. Well, well, clearly that's not true. So I'm, this this cannot be a solution. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is I'm not doing calculus on a calculus problem to help me eliminate some, some answers. You can keep playing this game. You could also do like I did in that first example and substitute. And so it's got to be one of these guys for the final. And now I'm going to move on to the last example here. Uh, thank you for your patience. I'm going to do an actual free response question. So they give us a differential equation. They ask us to write the equation of the tangent line. Use that tangent line to approximate f of 1.2. And then they want us to find the particular solution. So I'm going to kind of go through this quickly. 
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, split the screen kind of into two. So for part A, well, dy dx is how we find slope, right? So in this case, I just need to figure out what dy dx is when x is, well, 1 z and y is 0. So they're telling us that. So I'm just going to take 1 and 0, and I'm going to plug that into our equation, our differential equation. So y is 0, so I'm putting 0 in for y. I'm going to put a 1 in for the x. And we're going to see what we get. We're going to get 1, parenthesis 3, minus 6, which is negative 3. So there's our slope. That's what we wanted to find. So our equation is going to be y minus y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. So we're going to get y equals negative 3x minus 1. This would be the equation, if you will. This is our f of x, which is what they ask us to basically find. Okay. This is the equation of the tangent line. Uh, you know what? Let me let me be a little bit more uh, clear here. This is going to be this could be used to approximate f of x. This is our this is our tangent line. So now we can use that to approximate f of one point two. So uh, f of one point two will be approximately negative 3, and then I'm going to plug in that 1.2, oops, get rid of that extra parenthesis, I don't need that yet, uh, minus 1, and so that's going to be negative 3 times 0.2, which is negative 0 0.6. So now we've got part A done. So there's the tangent line, and there's the approximate value of the function at 1.2. Now we're going to get to the harder part, which is finding the particular solution to the differential equation. So here's where I'm going to again have to do that whole separation of variables. So I'm going to kind of do that all in one fail swoop. So then I'm going to have dy is on the left. Now I need to make that e to the y come over here, so I'm going to divide it. So that's going to be, um, uh, I could write it as 1 over e to the y, but I'm going to write it as e to the negative y to kind of save me some time here, some space. And then on the right, I just got to move that dx over to the right. So that's just going to be 3x squared minus 6x and then dx. So now my variables are separated, so that's good. And we can go ahead and integrate here. I'm going to start with the right-hand side because that's going to be a little bit uh, more straightforward for the integration process. So i got to do the antiderivative of 3x squared, which is x cubed. And the antiderivative of negative 6x, would that be, uh, I think, negative 3x? And then I'll go ahead and put my plus c. Now, on the left-hand side, this one's a little trickier because technically you're going to have to do that whole u substitution here. So u would be equal to negative y, and therefore uh, du would be equal to negative dy, or you could say negative du is equal to dy. In other words, when you do the integral of this, you're going to do negative integral e to the u du, and so you get negative e uh, to the negative y. That's going to be the integral on the left. So this right here, this is not our answer. This is what we call the general solution. But they want us to find the particular solution. So we got to keep going. So now maybe I'll do a different color. So I'm going to use the fact that it says it has to go through the point 1, 0. So I'm going to use the point 1, 0 again. So this is going to be, let me rewrite this now. Negative e to the negative parenthesis, and then parenthesis q minus 3 parenthesis plus c. And now I'm going to plug in that uh, 0 for y and 1 for x. And let's go ahead and figure out what that's going to give us. So that's going to give us, uh, well, this would be negative 1 equals 1 minus 3 plus c. So that's going to be negative 2. So it looks like c is going to be equal to 1. And so now we know, in fact, let me do this maybe in purple, that uh, we have e to the negative y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1. That is the particular solution. And by the way, so far I've got almost this problem completely done, but this is something that they typically do on the AP exam, is they ask us to find y equals f of x. So to get the, 
the last part of this done, I've got to make this thing look like a Y. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, maybe I'll do that in green. I'm going to kind of come over. Oops. I don't want that. I don't want it. Let's do that in green. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, um, first of all, I'm going to get rid of that negative symbol there. So I'm going to make this e to the negative y equals, and all I'm doing is I'm flipping all of my symbols to the other, uh, like this. So I multiply the left side by negative and the right side by negative. And now I just need to natural log both sides. So maybe I'll do that in red. So now I'm going to natural log this side. I'm going to natural log this stuff. And uh, hopefully that'll get us where we need to be. So you're going to get uh, negative y equals the natural log of uh, negative x cubed plus 3x minus 1. Um, you know, technically that should be, um, technically this should be absolute value here, I think. So we'll make sure that there's nothing negative there. And so we can go ahead and finish this out. y equals negative uh, so I have negative x cubed plus 3x minus 1. And I think we're done here. Um, you can stop watching the video at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip over here to the next slide where I've got the solution worked out just to show you the scoring. So for part A, that was out of three points. They give you a point for getting the negative 3. That's the slope. They give you a point for writing the equation of the tangent line, and then they give you a point for the approximation. So we got those three points. For part B, I want to emphasize this. You'll notice that um, they have um, zero out of six if there's no separation of variable. So that's something you've heard me kind of harp on in class. It's really important that you get the separation of variable that first, this step right uh, here. It's crucial. And you can see they did the integral just like I did. And their answer is basically the same thing as I've got, but they did put absolute value symbols. They did get C is equal to 1. And then they made a note down here basically saying that this has to be greater than 0, which is um, the same thing. So, And here's how you get your points. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.